On last week's episode, I brought you along on an introductory flight to multi-engine operations with Carl. I see blue light, you're looking good. On this episode, join us as we touch on some multi-engine procedures. Now you can start walking the airspeed back just to here. Nearly a quarter of a century ago, I found myself driving down a dirt road that led to my hometown airport for my very first flight. I never dreamed it would lead to such amazing adventures, and now it's time to share. going to cycle the prop more than once because it's already been okay. ran today. I started the fuel selectors, make sure the primers are in a lot. Okay, now I'm going to check the flight controls, make sure they're free and correct. There you go. Verified rudder pedals are good. And then the nose wheel, I'm sorry, the nose trim. Okay, it's set. Now we got that. Now uh, generators are on. Mixture's coming rich, props are full forward. Now bring the power up to 2,000 RPM. On both of them or one of them? Yep, both of them. Pull your brakes. And just be cognizant that the airplane may start rolling when you increase the power. So we're at 2,000 RPMs. Yes, sir. If you look down to the left, that's you'll the right see. mag. So, so, yep, left. There you go. All right, 50 RPM drop. Okay, now back up. Right. Okay. Yep. Drop is good. Okay, so the number one engine checks. Let's go to the number two engine. So let's check. Okay. There. RPM drive good. Okay. RPM drive good. Cool. Back on. All right. Now, one one cycle of the prop. I see a drop, a rise, and a drop. Okay. And no oil on the cowling. Yep. All right. Number two. Number drop two. in RPM, rise yep. in manifold. Yep. Okay. I see. Yep. No oil on the. So that checks. Now, next thing is the generator check. And we use the RPMs at 2,000 for this. Well, yes. Sure okay. will. Yes, sir. Okay, amps are good. We're turning off. We'll turn one on at a time. Okay. So both generators are producing current. Now okay. we're bringing the throttles all the way to idle. Okay, throttles to idle. All the way back. What we're doing is to close idle check, make sure the engines don't shut off when okay. we pull power back. All the okay. way back. Now up to 1,000 RPMs. Okay, 1,000 RPMs on both. Okay, we'll run the, we'll run the before takeoff checklist, because we basically did the flow. So back needles, we checked. Props, we cycled. Power beat, we, power beat, we did not check, so let's bring the power back up. This okay. is why we do a checklist. This is exactly why we do a checklist. Okay. Power beats are checking. Power beats are good. Now bring okay. the power back. Idle. And vacuum is good. Engine gauges are good. Throttle's idle. And we check the flight controls. The doors and windows are closed. The lights, we'll get the landing lights in here in a second. Okay. We'll get the fuel pumps here in a second, and we'll get the traffic call here in a second. All right, so we'll talk about the departure briefing real quick, okay? One of the requirements to achieve a multi-engine rating in accordance with the Airman Certification Standards, or ACS, is to give a thorough departure briefing. The FAA has a light twin briefing sheet that I have my students use in order to make sure they cover all the important key elements before departure. Like for you today. I am the pilot in command, obviously. Anything happens prior to rotation, we're going to pull both power levers back to idle, and we're going to stop. Anything happens after we take off, and we still got the gear down with runway available, we're going to pull the power levers back, and we're going to land straight ahead. Okay. Once we've got the performance and the capability to climb single, if anything happens to one of the engines on climb out, and we got the gear up, we're clear to 50 foot obstacle, we're at blue line, we're going to continue to fly the aircraft straight ahead and treat it as an in-flight emergency, return okay. back to this runway. So I'll fly the airplane, I'll have you uh, declare an emergency. And that applies for any emergency that might occur in the flight. Okay. According to the light twin control performance briefing that the FAA puts out, right now our density altitude is 600 because they're a nice cool day. 
Okay. We got 5,214 feet available. Our takeoff weight is going to be 3,300 pounds. We're going to require a maximum of 1,100 feet. Okay. okay, I'm conservative now on that. Accelerate stop distance will be 2,300. So that means that's the speed that we can stop from start from zero, lose an engine at rotation speed, pull the pod back, and stop with a conservative fudge factor. Okay. okay. Any questions on that? All right, so passenger and crew brief is complete. You got your seatbelt secure? Yes, sir. Go ahead and let's get the lights on, the fuel pumps right. on. Let's call the tower. Fuel pumps okay. on. I'll call the tower and let them know we're ready to roll. We're on tower? Yes, sir. Here now. San Marcos Tower, Apache 1140 Papa is ready to go run away. As a multi-engine pilot, it is key to understand the following terms. VMC, VYSE, V1, Accelerate Stop, and Accelerate Go. VMC is a minimum control speed with the critical engine and operative. There are two types of VMC. There's actual VMC, which is based off of a variety of factors, which we'll talk about in a later episode. And there's published VMC, which is indicated by the red radial line on the lower threshold of the airspeed indicator. In a nutshell, VMC is the absolute minimum speed in which control of the aircraft can be maintained with an asymmetrical power failure in a multi-engine aircraft. Centerline thrust airplanes such as the Cessna 337 Skymaster do not have this Achilles heel. VYSE is the best rate of climb single engine. It is indicated by the infamous blue line on an airspeed indicator. And in a light twin engine airplane, it is your best friend and go-to speed when things go bad. V1 is typically not a speed you see until you move up to commuter or transport category aircraft such as King Air 350 or Hawker 900. V1 is also known as decision speed. At that speed, rejecting a takeoff is considered more hazardous than handling any situation that arises as an in-flight emergency. While I fly a two-pilot aircraft which has a V1 speed, I brief my crew that once V1 is achieved, as long as the airplane will lift off the runway, we're flying and will deal with the issue as required once we're to a safe altitude and accomplish only the required immediate action items with dual concurrence between myself and my SIC. Accelerate stop is the distance required to begin a takeoff roll, lose an engine at a specified speed, and stop on the runway. The Piper Apache is a 1955 aircraft and it's certified without a published accelerate stop distance. In order to have some sort of numbers to go off of, I basically establish a makeshift Excel stop distance by taking the takeoff chart and ground roll charts and utilizing the set environmental conditions as well as adding a 20% factor to the length to have something to use for contingency planning. Though it's not certified or a published method, it's conservative and it's better than having no plan at all. Accelerate Go is a distance required to continue after the assumed failure and clear a 50 foot obstacle. I'll cover more about this distance in a later episode as well, but for this aircraft, unless the criteria are met as shown, your usual best course of action is to pull the power levers back and abort the departure in most cases, even if you have to go off the end of the runway. In a light twin engine airplane, a power plant failure on the departure phase of flight is the most critical situation that could result into a catastrophic accident with loss of life. Having a concrete plan of action to deal with contingencies is key to increasing aviation safety. 247 San Marcus, set cross runway 31, runway 35, clear for takeoff. Cross runway 31, clear for takeoff, 35, ferry 247. So, we're not going to feather a full engine or anything like that. Okay. But just so you can kind of see how the experience would be. Okay. Uh, if you lost an engine, let's say we're out two and around like this. I got the, uh, uh, actually uh, you had the controls. Okay, my controls. And all of a sudden, this will be a simulated engine failure. Okay. okay. Right. I'm going to identify the throttle. I'm bring the throttle back. Okay. So your immediate action items would be to bank to the a good engine. Okay. Rudder. Catching for blue line. Make sure as required. Props coming full forward. Bottles full forward. See how that thing really wants oh, to wow. sneak over on you? Gear up, flaps up. That's your immediate action items. Okay. That really takes a lot of rudder. Right. 
So then you decide, can I fix the problem? No. Mm -hmm. So well, then I'm going to feather. So how I feather, I, I start from left to right. And I go right rudder, uh, throttle back, identify, bring it back, bring it back. So what I'm going to do to, to simulate feather is I'm going to bring in 12 inches. Okay. And what that does is, in training, this simulates zero thrust. In other words, right now we're simulating a feathered engine. All right. And during your multi-engine training, let's come out to the left so we don't penetrate the, the class delta. Okay. We're in communication, but we're, we're still, I don't want to do okay. that. Okay. It so still does I'm, require quite a bit of left rudder. It does, so. it does. But you can bank into the good engine, and it helps offset that differential. There you go. So we'll just bring it back now. You're good now. You got two good engines. I just okay. wanted to see what that was. Yeah, no, that was cool to feel. Now the other thing I didn't, I didn't show you, um, and this is what has killed a lot of multi-engine pilots, is I omitted to say identify, verify. Okay. What I said was mixture is required, props will forward, throttles will forward, but I didn't say. Identify, verify, and we do that by dead foot, dead engine. Okay. Before you touch any prop leathers to feather anything in a twin, you got to make for sure that you are feathering the correct engine. The correct engine. And what is the quickest way of, of verifying that other than actually okay. feeling it? Let me just run through it with, and let you watch. Okay. okay. I have the flight control. All right, it's your plane. So I'm flying along, doodling around, and all of a sudden, oh, no. All right. Directional control. So I'm going to fly my heading. I'm pitching for blue line. Okay. Putting right rudder in to maintain directional control. Make sure it's required. Props coming full forward. Throttles full forward. That's when the, the yaw tendency really comes in. Identify. Okay. Dead foot. My left, my left engine is dead. Okay. Dead foot, dead engine, so I'm going to verify. Now, okay. I would verify, if it really feathered, I'd just run it yeah. back and forth, and nothing would happen. If I grab the cor the incorrect engine, or I'd say that if I grab the operating engine, this is okay. what would happen. It would it would have a change in yaw direction. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yes, but sir. if this was dead, and I worked it back and forth, you'd see no change in yaw. Does okay. that make sense? Yeah, no, absolutely. Okay, so, so, verifi so we verified. Okay. Yeah, I we know, know I just spit a lot of, lot of information. Yeah, no, I, I'm following. But it's a good intro. All right. So then you decide, are you going to fix or are you going to feather? If you're going to feather, you know, it's a whole variety of reasons whether you feather or not. And okay. we'll talk about that, you know, when we get back to your hangar. You have to start from left to right. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. So left engine's failed, left prop is identified. I'd bring this one back to, to the feather position. Okay. Wait till it feathered, then I would continue my sequence, and then once I fully feather, then I'd follow the feathering checklist. Once you get below 750 RPMs in this, on this airplane, feathering may not be possible because... You they, need oil pressure to do it. Well, there's these feathering stops in the prop hub okay. that prevents the, in, the prop from feathering on the ground. Okay. Does that make sense? All right. We're reconfigured for cruise. We can fly around a little bit more, or we can head back in. It's your day, depending your on how much time you got. All right. I need to get back and start getting things set up, I think. All right. Okay, we're kind of already set up on our downwind for 3 This flight was simply here? a broad overview of some of the things that you will see in your multi-engine training. There are several factors that Carl and I debriefed in his hangar after we landed. We talked about zero size slip, how the props are different between a single engine and multi-engine airplane, and how detrimental it is to clearly delineate which engine is truly failed before taking any action whatsoever. In any emergency situation, no matter what, the number one priority is to fly the aircraft, make methodical, deliberate pilot or crew actions, and you'll hear me say this like a broken record. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Next week, I'll take you along with me as I touch more on engine and operative procedures as I run you all through a full engine shutdown, feather, and restart. Until next time, be safe, keep learning, and never give up on a dream. So long.